Hey, 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 wait, don't just cut the power just yet. Joshua, thank you for playing all the way through. Hey guys, Bob Roger here, and we're back with another episode of Let's Play Warner Project J. You may be wondering what this is all about. Well, Dr. Geppetto will explain. Now playing the game for the second time, the training evaluation system will be in effect. TES measures your ability to clear events in as few days as possible. So simply put, I actually beat the game once and I'm resuming on a new game plus. If you score well enough, you'll be able to see the true ending, and that's why I'm doing it. Don't worry though, you'll get to see the false ending. It's a test of your ability as a Gijin trainer. Please give it a try. We will start from Act 2. Go! Good luck. So yes, I played through the game once. I did record the ending, and that'll be that'll be done at the end. And we're starting from Act Two, Help Number Forty Six. Okay, Joshua. Today we begin Pino's real training. Let's activate all seven hearts and awaken Circuit J. Ready? Hmm. I wonder what she what we should start with. Ah, I know. And Tinker's gonna take us away to the scene here. Ha ha! Typical stupid Model 4600! Ow! Hey! Cut it out! You're supposed to be on our side! Your side? Ha! I work for our masters, the humans! We don't have any more use for worn-out old Model 4600s. You mass-produced pieces of junk! Oh, you want to fight? We interface to rob We interface robots directly represent the human's will. If you rise up against me, do you realize what they will do to this village in response? Hmm. <laughs> Damn you! There's a Gijin being toyed with by Gichu. I feel so sorry for him. Joshua, let's see if we can find a way to rescue him. Hmm. If I recall, there's a ball lying just in front of Gichu. That's it. Let's hit Gichu with that ball and punish him. In order to do that, we need to have Pino master how to throw a ball. You see that ball lying there? Guide Pino to the ball. Pino will decide what to do with the ball on his own. If he throws it, be sure to praise him. If you keep praising him when he does it right, he'll master it. On the other hand, if he doesn't do what you want, you can scold him. And he'll do that action less. Understand? Of course. Okay, let's go ahead and have Pino go out to that Gijin's location before he masters ball throwing and see what happens. Ready? I'm going to wake him up now. Pino, time to get up! Hey, uh, Joshua. So, in case you didn't realize yet, uh, Pino always talks in white. And Tinker always talks in pink. And as I was saying before we had some exposition interrupt me, um, I, I did beat the game once before so that we could get the true ending. I did record the false ending, and I will be playing that at the end of the series as well. So you'll get to see both endings. Uh, other than than the uh, the training thing that Dr. Geppetto was talking about, the game plays identically in a second run through. The only actual difference is my money. 
that carries over whatever I had at the end of the previous game. So normally you start a new game with only 30,000 Corlos, and I have 120,500 Corlos, because I was just that awesome. That's not to say that I need that much t in order to uh, complete this game. I've actually done it the, the second playthrough, which is actually much tougher to, to get the true ending with. I've gotten the true ending with, uh, I think I started the game with 6,000 Corlos. But, uh, if you want to see a first playthrough of Wonder Project J, I would recommend watching Franco Maddox Let's Play. This is going to be a second playthrough, obviously. I'm going to try to show off a lot of the situations where uh, you have your scenario. I'm just going to take... I'm going to save it first, but then I'm going to take Pino out there to see how he does before I do anything special. And that's precisely what we're doing here. I'm not saving it first here because it doesn't really matter. Anyway. Agent 46 is being harassed here. Let's rescue him. This is how the bulk of the game is. You have a training phase and then you have a story phase. This is the story phase here. Joshua, let's watch how Pino does. Eh? Who's there? Ah, a human master. Ah, ha ha! Hello there! Nothing special to see here. I was just warning a rebellious Gijin. Mm -hmm. Well, I haven't trained him so he doesn't know what to do with the ball. So he's just gonna stomp on it. Hey, what are you doing? That didn't go too well. Let's make sure Pino completely masters ball throwing. I agree, Tinker. Okay, so one of the things that you're going to notice about Pino is when he stands still for a while, eventually he's just going to start walking on his own, usually towards the door. And he's not doing it right now, I guess because I'm talking about him. It tends to happen a lot while I'm going through my items, and it's kind of annoying. Uh, if that becomes a problem for you, you can use the sit still, which I picked up on the second floor. Uh, it won't be permanent, but it'll last for a while. Anyway, we need to teach him what to do with the rubber ball. No. That is not what we do with the ball. Yes, that was wrong. Try again. Yeah, that's what I want you to do. Is that okay just now? You bet it was, Pino. Do it again, for good measure. Uh, no. Let's, let's not do that. Come on, throw the ball. Good job. I need you to do it a few more times just to make sure you got it. Yeah, that was good. Now this is one of Pino's problems. He has a severe case of ADHD. So he's not going to do one thing for very long. That is not what you do with the book. When he's bored of the ball, I would actually suggest developing his mental skills. No, that's what you do with the ball, not the book. Grammar book is a great place to start with his mental skills. And that's what you do. Read the book. Try it again. Let's see. A, B, C. Correct. Yes, that was okay just now. That was bad. Don't do that. Read the book. He's bored again. Well, his ADHD, 
I believe comes from his diligence stat, which you can see here. It's one of the green ones that isn't really associated to one of his main stats, the aggression, athleticism, intelligence, or sensitivity. And uh, those green stats, it's hard to tell what you need any of them for in any given situation. I like to just try to keep them all maxed out because there's never a downside to having all of those green stats maxed out except for stress. Stress, you want to keep that as close to zero as possible. <sighs> so, he's bored of the book, so we'll have him try the ball again. Yeah, that's good. Eventually, he'll figure it out. Now he says he got it, so every time I give him the ball, he's going to throw the ball. Good job, Pino. Well, let's see how he does now that he knows how to actually throw the ball. Although he hasn't figured out how to open a door yet. So we will let him waltz on out. Now, I like to let Pino walk most of the places that you go because uh, if he's running, he's actually draining health slowly, but he does not drain health when he's walking. So that's why I do that. Anyways, here we have another chance. Hey, be careful with that! If that ball had been moving a little faster, it'd hit me! Well, apparently, Pino does not have good arm strength. His throwing speed, in other words, his arm strength, isn't high enough, it seems. Let's use an item to raise the strength of his arms. You'll need to learn to use all sorts of items. Indeed. We just happen to have an item that's great for strengthening arms. The steel dumbbell. Of course, we're going to have to teach him how to use it all over again. And that was correct. You can use that to strengthen your arms. Now, I say it's a good idea to work on his mental capabilities while you're doing this, because... The higher his mental capabilities are, the quicker he'll catch on to what he's supposed to do with items. And in general, it just makes life a whole lot easier. Yes, that was great, Pino. No, no. Don't, don't spin your head around. People are gonna think you're, like, trying to do the exorcist or something. Now, you have the ability to scold him twice in a row to hit him, but I recommend only using this in very rare circumstances. And I will point those circumstances out if they do happen to occur. Usually such a circumstance would only be when he eats an item. And yes, he can eat near about any given item. It could be really annoying when he eats a really expensive item. So, I've got to teach him how to read. I accidentally let him go again without telling him that was good. I don't think he's actually figured out that uh, the book is for reading yet. Okay, now he's got it. Now every time he picks up any book, not just the grammar book, but any book, he will try to read it. But his mental skills are still pretty low, and he's going to have trouble with any other kind of book besides the grammar book. So we want to raise his mental skills up. So we're going to keep reading the book. Of course, he's bored with it, so now we're going to go back to the steel dumbbell. Da, 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 da. 
And now he's figured out how to use the steel dumbbell. However, it would be a good idea to keep telling him he's doing good because it raises his confidence and his trust. And it lowers his stress, just to tell him that he's doing the right thing. And these are good because confidence is key for a lot of things in the game. And trust is just basically how well he's going to listen to you. If he doesn't have much trust, he's going to ignore you and really not do anything you say. Uh, if it ever gets to the point that he just will not do a single thing, you can give him some pudding, and that will raise his trust about 30 points. So it's good to always keep some pudding on hand, just in case you really piss him off. But once you got his uh, confidence and his trust maxed out and his stress is zero, the whole training thing goes a lot quicker. So I've already almost got his trust up there. And he's bored again, so we'll go on to the grammar book again. And you can see what any given action increases and, de and decreases by going into your menu here immediately after doing it, and it'll show you the change arrows. See, reading the book raises his diligence, reasoning, and imagination, and lowers his arm power. So it's a little counterproductive with the, uh, the weight. But uh, you can actually go further on that, and after praising him, you can see that it raises his confidence and trust. So there is that. But yeah, I like to uh, raise his mental capacity, because it makes everything easier. And honestly, there's never any time in the game that him having a high mental capacity is a bad thing. There are times in the game where you'll have to lower some stats purposely in order to get through a given situation. But we'll worry about that later. For now, just know that the grammar book does lower his arm strength, but it raises his intelligence more than it lowers his arm strength. So there is a net gain there. I guess I could keep praising him until his confidence gets up to 99. 99 is the max for any stat. And, uh, for his four main stats, aggression, athleticism, intelligence, and sensitivity, it will be decided by some strange combination of all the stats that share the same color with those stats. Like, aggression will be decided by your attack and defense. Intelligence will be decided by your reasoning and imagination. Sensitivity will be decided by your feeling, expression, and kindness. And athleticism will be decided by your arm power, balance, and leg power. It's a good idea to work up your athleticism and intelligence quickly. And then, throughout the rest of the game, all you have to really do is keep a nice balance on your aggression and your sensitivity. But the, the main stat itself does have a score separate from the sum of its individual stats. So how close am I to maxing out his confidence? Pretty close. And he's already bored with the book. So, back to pumping iron. How much does that raise him by? Two? Okay, so just two more times praising him and I'll be done with the praise. So in this new game plus, in order to 
get the best ending. Yeah, I got my max confidence and trust, so now I'm just gonna pump the iron. In order to get the best ending, each act in the game has a target number of days that you have to beat it under. And so that's what our goal is. Now, with as much money as I have, it'll be ridiculously easy to meet this goal because eventually there will be a shop. And you can basically buy energy recharges. Uh, where it becomes difficult is when you don't have money to buy those. You have to really make the use of your energy each day. Right now I don't have access to the shop, so I have to do things the old-fashioned way. But you see at the top I have a pretty good balance with my health and my energy there. Uh, you can lower each one down to 20 before it affects him physically. Lowering his health below 20 will make him walk around all tired like, and lowering his energy below 20 will make him act kind of depressed. All work and no play, they say. But he, he can still perform physical feats, like a single act, such as like throwing a ball, just fine when he's low on energy. But other things, like running around, would be more difficult when he's low on health and energy. So you wouldn't want him running any marathons or anything while he's low on either one. And he's bored with the book again. We're getting up there with reasoning, though. Well, we need to keep working at the, uh, the arm strength here. And this is going to be the bulk of the game. At least until we get the stats initially maxed out. After that point, then it's just a matter of manipulating balance within the stats. Now, I believe on this first day you have three days as your target number of days. So, it's alright to use a day or two to just pump up the stats. But I wouldn't use too much of it because, I mean, there's really not a whole lot you can really raise in the stats right now. Now, if you really want to max out his arm strength quickly, you can just switch between the ball and the dumbbell rather than doing the book. But I do want to get his intelligence skills up. I'll probably only go until his reasoning is at 99, because it does lower his arm strength some. And it's not raising his imagination very much. There are other things that will raise his imagination though, so I don't need to worry about that too much. Almost there. Definitely need to keep a close eye on his energy though, because it is getting low. Eventually he'll get over his severe case of ADHD when you uh, get his stats up high enough. And you don't ever want to let either of his health or energy drop below zero because uh, then you'll lose three days and you'll lose 3,000 Corlos, so 
Yeah. Not a good idea to let his health or energy drop below zero. And there are some things that will instantly kill him, such as expecting inspecting the well outside when he has low balance. So he'll fall in and instantly drop his health below zero. And I think that I am going to go ahead and let him rest. It only costs 100 Corlo to rest. So... That is definitely the alternative you would want to take to, uh... Letting him run out of energy. 100 Corlo in one day versus 3,000 Corlo in three days. Eh. Also, you can save. But uh, if you want to save without using up a day, just jump to the pod and tell her that's not okay to spend 100 Corlo to restore his energy, and then she'll prompt you to save. And then he'll greet you every morning. Good morning, Joshua. Or every time he comes out of the pod. Well, my, s my stats are almost maxed out here, so... I am going to go ahead and finish that up real quick, and then we'll head on out to uh, Gichu, take care of him, and save number 46. This should be the last time I need to read the book. Of course, I believe this lowers my reasoning to play with the dumbbell, so... Yeah. But only by one. So I can get my arm strength maxed out and my reasoning fairly close to maxed out. And that's what I'm going to do here. Now his arm power is 99, his reasoning is 95. So reading this book once or twice ought to max out his reasoning again. Twice. And the dumbbell once should max out his arm strength again. There we go, that's best I can hope for right now. It is possible to actually max out all of the stats, but there's rarely any time that you actually need all of his stats maxed out at once. Although there is one time that you, know, you want most of them maxed out. But that's later. Now let's take care of Gichu once and for all, and rescue number 46. Oops, I went right back to Dr. Geppetto's house. That is so easy to do. He still hasn't figured out how to just open the door normally, and so he's gonna pick the lock. Alright. Let's go help number 46. Take that! And I threw the ball so hard that he exploded on impact. Are you alright? But thank you. But why would a human What? Is my imagination or do I feel like Gijin pulse from you? Eh I'm sorry, we didn't mean to surprise you. An interface robot, but that means 
That's right, this boy is a Gijin. He's the newest model, just recently activated. I'm Pino! Pleased to meet you! Amazing! He looks just like a human. Ah, huh, where are my manners? My name is Gijin Model 4600, or number 46. Pleased to meet you. And thank you so much for helping me out there. I can't do anything for you in return. But at least, if you ever have any trouble, feel free to come ask me for advice. Thank you! Ah, by the way, why was Gichu picking on you like that? Lately, the humans keep showing more and more hatred and prejudice towards us for no apparent reason. Like Gichu, other interface robots have been betraying us as well. If things continue like this, I'm afraid it's only a matter of time before human Gijin relations become irrecoverable. But, Pino. Looking at you now, I have a feeling that you may be the one to someday save us all from this situation, using a power yet unimagined. I expect great things from you, Pino. You can count on it! Joshua, that went great! Just like you did then, guide Pino around this island, letting him experience as much as possible and activating all seven of his heart circuits in order to awaken Circuit J. If you ever get stuck, you can try asking number 46 or perhaps see what the people in town are talking about. Are you ready then, Joshua? Alright, let's go. Let's go, Joshua! And then we get our evaluation. It took me two days to complete the act, and I had three days to do it in. So I got a plus one. Very impressive! Excellent work! And that brings us on to Act 3, Old Fam's Farm. However, we will tackle that in the next episode. This has been Let's Play Wonder Project J, Mechanical Boy Pino. I am Blamager, and I will see you guys later.